This is Brian and Scott with Briscoe Hikes. We're at the Home Quarry Campground in the George Washington National Forest of Virginia. After this day, we really need this. Enjoy the hike. morning. It's a brisk 28 degrees this morning. We're at the Hone Quarry Campground. We're getting ready to start our hike. We're going to spend one night out in the woods tonight. Thanks for coming along. So we're going to be spending one night out on the trail as Scott had mentioned before. And we're actually in this area right here right now. And we're going to be taking the Big Hollow Trail up to meet the Hone Quarry Mountain Trail. So we'll come along this route and then we'll end up spending the night right around this area and then tomorrow morning we'll take the Heartbreak Trail back down to the uh, campground and head on home. It's roughly 5.1 miles round trip. Starting our hike now, as you can see we have a little bit of a road walk, roughly quarter mile before we get to the trailhead. We're on the Big Hollow Trail. We're going to be following the yellow blazes you see on the tree here. About a mile to a mile and a half. Then we're going to hit the Hone Quarry Mountain Trail. And we're going to take that down the rest of the day and that's where we're going to camp off of. So we're here at the intersection. We're currently on the big hollow trail, which goes on this way. And then tomorrow, we'll be coming out on the Heartbreak Trail, coming out right here. According to what we saw on the map, this creek is the only water crossing we're going to have on the entire loop. And it's also the only water source. So we actually are carrying in our water for this particular trip. But look at this beautiful green moss covered creek bed here. All the stones are covered in it. It's absolutely beautiful. We just crossed that creek that we showed you. As Brian mentioned, that was the only water source. So we packed in our water. We brought three liters each, which should be plenty for this, this overnight. And even for some, a few extra hot beverages. You know, we like our coffee. So we're continuing to follow the creek that we had crossed. As you can see down this way, you'll also see 
It's a nice rock formation. We are starting to gain an elevation on our hike and the sun has come out above the mountain. So now it's actually starting to warm up. We can feel the temperature difference from when we first started at the car. So we're not quite two miles into our hike when we ran into our first switchback. The trail's going behind you, it's taking us up the mountain. You can see that the trail is a lot narrower once we turned up the mountain. We think we have roughly another half a mile before we reach the top of the mountain. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit now that we're climbing an elevation. When we parked the car down at the campsite, it was around 1,600 feet. Now we're standing right around 2,800 feet. And we got two or 300 more feet to go uh, before we hit the ridge. And um, one of the things that we learned in the weather report was that it was gonna get windier throughout the day. So we knew that there was gonna be nine to 10 mile an hour wind with gusts anywhere from 15 to 18 miles an hour. And right now, as I'm talking, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but we have, um, it's definitely picked up since we've gotten up higher in elevation. We've stopped for lunch. Our plans are to have a ramen bomb. We've been walking uphill all morning. It's around 12.30, 12, I think around 12.30 now. So we've been on the trail for nine and a half, excuse me, three and a half hours. I'll admit, it's been a while since we've backpacked. I think last August was the um, was when we went to the Tuscarora Trail in Pennsylvania. So our legs are not back yet, but we're still having a great time. For lunch, we plan on having a ramen bomb, and Brian is preparing it. talk over the stove but uh, we're doing a ramen bomb with uh, some tuna, mashed potatoes and a little bit of hot sauce. I usually like to go to the Asian market to get my ramen uh, because it, they have some unique flavors and usually the ramen is a little bit more substantial. We'll check back in once it's all cooked up. Add a little bit of tuna to the ramen. We'll let it soak up and then I'll add the uh, mashed potatoes. And the last is the Texas beet. Add the mashed potatoes last and that allows your noodles to set up. They rehydrate better. You can just stir the potatoes into everything. There we go. One tuna ramen bomb with hot sauce. Well, we're all packed up from lunch and uh, we got to continue on our way. One thing that we didn't point out before um, was when we got up from the big hollow trail up to the um, Hone Quarry Mountain Trail, which is what we're on now, there was a campsite there, right there at the intersection. At least on the map it showed there was one. And although there is a spot for a very small tent, it doesn't look like it's been used in quite some time. 
So we're a little bit worried about uh, the campsite that we've selected, which is at the end of, uh, I guess, you know, at the end of uh, the Hone Quarry Mountain Trail where it connects to the Heartbreak Trail. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what it's like. Uh, we'll take our chances. We may, um, as we get to the, uh, there's an overlook coming up, as we get to the overlook, if it looks like there's a really nice campsite there, although there's nothing, there's not one listed, um, we may end up staying there uh, if it looks like there's one nice enough to stay at. It's been about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes since we, we ate our lunch. Um, we were just noticing as we were coming down the trail about the uh, the feeling that we are really in a remote place. Yeah. We, we know that we're not. We can actually see up behind the camera. We were walking along a ridge. We could actually see a town off in the distance, so we're not that remote. But the feeling up here, if you look, look beyond us, it's... Uh, it feels really remote. It's, it's absolutely spectacular and beautiful up here today. Yeah, it really is. And the trail's been pretty good. Um, you can tell that the uh, Forest Service has been grooming the trail. There's definitely evidence of them, um, like, cutting back some of the brush. Mm -hmm. But there are, uh, there were four or five trees down, big trees, that we've had to scramble over along the way so far. And they know about them. Trust me, guys, they do know about them. Because, like I said, they've been grooming the trail. It just takes a whole other level of effort to uh, to remove some of those trees from the trail. Yep. So if you do come out here, just know that there's uh, there's at least four trees down. Well, according to the map, uh, we're really close to where the second campsite is. So let me show you what we have found in case anyone else is out here. Um, this doesn't look a whole lot better than the first campsite that we came to, uh, completely overgrown and, and not really big enough for um, even a one-person tent, honestly. It looks like there's a fire ring over there that's been taken apart by probably the rangers, but this place is too overgrown. We're going to keep on going, and hopefully we're wrong, but... Based on the map and the terrain, we really think this is the, the campsite, or the second campsite, which is in worse shape than the first one, and the first one, we almost passed it by, it was so overgrown. So. We wanted to show you the trail conditions too. For easily the past mile, it's been overgrown the way that the trail looks here. walls of, of bush and shrubs on either side. It's been a great hike and it's been really beautiful, but there's been no place to go off trail anywhere, um, which is why we think that that campsite was, what we just passed was the campsite. It's a mile later from where we were, where we were showing you how overgrown the trail was. There has been no other possible campsite. You may recognize this sign because we've completed the five mile loop. We have, and this one here says, 0.1 miles back to the road to where our car is. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you just keep walking. Well, as you saw, things didn't really work out. We're right back here at the campground where we started from this morning. It was still a good day, so yeah. let's talk about the things that we liked. Right. First thing is, it was a it was a glorious day. Yeah. The, the weather was really nice. Yeah, it's a mild January day. 
We had, it was low 50s. The sun was out. The sky was blue. Heck, when the sun was beating down, we were actually getting kind of hot. Sure, you sure were. We really liked how remote some of this this area is. We, yeah. We filmed some of that, too, where we talked about it. I don't know how well it came out on camera, but it did feel like we were pretty far off the beaten path. You could tell that the, uh, the, the big hollow trail that connects to the Hone Quarry Run Trail was well used. Mm -hmm. But when you connected to the Heartbreak Trail on the way back, yeah. that one isn't as used. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It was not used. There's also more water on this trail than what our map that we found said. And less campsites. <laughs> and less campsites. You know, like we said, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work out. And sometimes you end up right back where you started from. You know, I think, you know, with backpacking, that's just the way it goes. Sometimes it's great. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Sometimes there's a little pain. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there's a change of plans. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then sometimes it just doesn't work out. Yep. You hike on. Hike on. This is Scott and Brian from Briscoe Hikes. Hope you enjoyed the video.